Native of Society Part 2 Session 4. This evening we are going to establish illustratively what share of the wealth produced goes to the control of land and what share of wealth produced goes to the control of labor. This we have defined in previous sessions, rent and wages respectively. One who controls the land is a landowner, one who works, a laborer, and one who controls capital is a capitalist. These three functionaries may be one person, as in the case of a small landowner, but in large enterprises, these three are often different persons. These are three distinct functionaries, and one must get this in mind. Our purpose here is not to determine how much wealth is received, but we are acting here as analysts to try in trying to determine and ascertain by what powers they are enabled to obtain their wealth. So, so please also keep this in mind. The principal claimants to wealth produced are the landowner, the laborer, and the capitalist. There are other secondary claimants, such as the providers of some raw materials that go into the operation or the tax authorities. These can have an impact on the viability of the enterprise if they are excessive, but we will treat with these possible impacts on another, in another session. The discussion this evening does not relate to the rent and wages derived from any particular industry, but with the general level throughout society. If the share taken by the landowner in rent increases, the wages received by the laborer will reduce commensurately. Rent, as we saw in part one, only arises when a community exists. With a community of one, there is no rent. Even with a community of two, three, four or five, there is no rent. Rent only arises when the best lands are occupied as others come along. And as others come along, they must settle for inferior or less productive land. Now, this phenomenon has nothing to do with any natural abilities the first comers had. It simply has to do with the fact that these first comers occupy the best lands. If equal skill and effort is applied to the best land and to the inferior land, the product or yield would be greater on the best land simply because it is the best land. Do we understand this? Are there any questions or comments here? So as, so as a community grows, so as to absorb all the best land available and begin to spread on the inferior land, a proportion of the wealth produced on the better land becomes rent. The poorer the land in, in to which the community spreads, the greater the proportion of wealth produced on the better land will be rent, and as a result, the smaller the proportion taken in wages. This does not mean that the amount of wealth going to the laborer would necessarily be reduced. It is a fact that a, as a community grows, the amount of wealth produced per head of the population on the best land and on the poorest land increases substantially. So we first have where the, the depiction of where first arrivers arrive, where all the best lands are occupied. And in this, and in this scenario, there's no rent. Notwithstanding this, there is an increasing disparity in the share of wealth taken as rent and the share of wealth taken as wages. This relationship, grow, this relationship between rent and wages is a dynamic one. As the community grows, rent as a share of wealth grows, and wages decrease as a share of wealth. This can be depicted by the following line diagrams. So we have this diagram, this line, line diagram, where we have three groups of arrivers, group A, group B, and group C. And the product of well produced on for each group applying e equal skill and effort to the various lands taken up so on in group a 
the first arrivals have a product of 100, the second arrivals have a product of 90, and the third arrivals have a product of 80. Equal skill and effort applied to each uh, area of land. In our diagram, as the first arrivals come and establish themselves, they all have access to the best lands. No one has an advantage over the other. As the second group of arrivals come, they set up on the next best available lands. And as these lands are inferior to the first groups, immediately the phenomenon of rent arises as the yield on the first group exceeds that of the second. As group C arrives, group B's product now has a rental value over C, as well as group A over C. The assumption is, the assumption, it must be repeated, is that each group is applying equal skill and effort on their tracts of land. The use of numbers would help to illustrate the points very clearly. Let the product or yield of each group, each number of the groups be a, B, 100, the product or yield on each group, or each, each number of group B, B, 90, and the product or yield on each number of group C is 80. With equal skill and effort applied throughout, the phenomenon of rent arises with group A over group B being 10 in the first instance, and group B over group C of also 10. Group A would have a rental value of 20 over Group C. Group C would have no rental value now, but when a Group D arrives, then new rental values would immediately affect all groups. How are wages determined? Suppose a, a member of Group C wishes to no longer work on inferior land, but wishes to work on the best land. If he first wishes to be first employed, the group, the landlord in the group would of course ask him what wage he would be willing to work for. Then group, C, then group C worker would certainly say at least 80, because this is the wage that he can earn on the most inferior land. The group A landlord will not likely recruit him if he offers him less than that amount. If the group C worker wishes to lease the land from group A landowner, the landowner will not accept anything less than 20 because this is the amount he can earn in addition to his wage of 80. Similar transactions are likely if the Group C individual approaches a Group B landowner. Thus, it is that the share of wealth that goes in rent on the one land, on the one hand, and then wages on the other is determined by the amount of wealth that labor may produce upon the best land open to use free of charge. As population increases and wealth and pop as population increases and population extends on the inferior lands, the proportion of wealth going in rent on the better land will increase, and consequently the proportion of wages will decrease. In our discussion thus far, we are assuming that in our settler situation, all land is freely available. We want to introduce here the concept of margin of production. The margin of production is the best land to be had for free. The Group C landowner, is, in our example, occupies the margin of production. This may not necessarily be barren or infertile soil. It is simply the best land to be had for nothing. Rent, in summary, then, is determined by the difference between the product of labor on any piece of land over and above what the same labor and capital would produce at the margin of production. This is in the context of where land is freely available. When we return after the break, we will consider the situation where land is not freely available as in our current situation in society.
In the current situation of most societies, land is not freely available. Land is fully enclosed either by private individuals or the state. When this is the case, the situation is, whole, is wholly different as regards the relationship between rent and wages. Here's a line diagram that depicts the situation. So we have lands all enclosed with some held out of production. And on these lands held out of production, of course, there's no product or yield. And this is uh, dispersed. This, is, this phenomenon is seen throughout it. any society that we, you know, we visit. When, for whatever reason, lands are held out of production or are unproductive, then this situation must bring about unemployment and the denial of men to have their needs satisfied through work and land. In this scenario, the unemployed will necessarily have to approach those productive sites for employment. What these site owners will invariably do is ask those seeking em employment how much are, we willing, are you willing to work for? This places those seeking employment at a disadvantage where they will only work for the least amount, instinctively writing down the value of their labor. This wage value will turn out to be much lower than if the land is not enclosed. Rent will be determined by the difference between the amount of wealth produced on the land in question and the least which laborers will accept in wages. It is important to recognize the different conditions that will prevail when land is freely available and when it is not. When land is freely available, wages are higher throughout the society. The standard of living is higher and the laborer has the ability to own his own capital rather than having to borrow it. Productive, productivity as a consequence is much higher. In the scenario where land is enclosed, standards of living are low, wages are low, and the ability of the laborer to own or borrow capital is minimal. Productivity consequently is low. In periods of economic boom, all men can find employment easily and the competition for work will ease and wages will rise. But when the economy recedes, men who have nothing but their labor are dependent on, on employment with others for his very existence. And as all lands are enclosed, wages will be, ne will be necessarily lower as competition increases. Capital a special and pecuniary situation exists where land is all enclosed as it relates to capital. As we said, wages in this condition are low and the ability of men to provide their own capital to produce wealth with greater efficiency is minimal. In this scenario, the entrepreneur, usually a landowner, arises in the society who has the ability to provide the modern tools and equipment to produce the wealth with greater efficiency. Labor will tend to seek employment with this enterprise as the tools provided here are much more desirable than the rudimentary tools that the laborer can provide for himself were he self-employed. This ability to provide modern tools for production of wealth is the reason for the arrival of the conglomerate business and the attraction of the laborer to it. This is the situation where land is all enclosed. Where land is freely available, wages as a consequence are higher, and the need to borrow to provide one with capital for production is much lower. A whole band of entrepreneurs will arise naturally, and not from the need to find employment where modern tools and equipment exist. If the conglomerate arises, it will only be due to the desire for small entrepreneurs coming together to cooperate. The terms and conditions of this cooperation will be wholly different than if land was all enclosed. Wages Wages will vary between different types of work. Those whose vocation require more expensive training and greater skill 
will invariably obtain a higher wage for otherwise. It would not be worth a man's time and effort to undergo such training or acquire such a skill. Generally though, where land is freely available, wages will be high throughout and wealth will be more evenly distributed as a result of all men giving an equal chance to produce. The man who is more skillful will produce more wealth and it is only natural that he should obtain more. But it would not mean that he obtains a greater share of the total produced. Where land is all enclosed, he will be subject to competition as with any other man and will obtain no more than other equally skillful men will be willing to accept. The landowner and the entrepreneur will however be the recipient of the lion's share of the wealth produced. Before we end, I would like to again let you attendees know that Unsustainable Development is an educational offering devoted to the dissemination of its course to all of mankind and to those who have the English language as their official language in the first instance and to all eventually all over the world. To make this possible and because we do not charge a fee for this dissemination, we rely wholeheartedly on monetary donations to meet the cost of achieving these goals. If you have found these sessions useful thus far and would like others to have access to them, we would gratefully accept your donations should you be inclined to offer them. You can send donations to our PayPal account at the email address Broker 2001 at yahoo.com. Thank you for your kind gesture. As indicated before, you can communicate with us by going to our Facebook page on sustainable development or on our YouTube channel, Balancing the Economy. We will respond to all your comments or questions. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, press the start alert button to get notices. That our latest session has been posted. All sessions are archived at our Facebook page. Please share with your family, friends and acquaintances.